Good evening. All right. Am I, the city of Boston, should I, can you pull up the virtual hearing statement? All right, good evening. The city of Boston Zoning Board of, of Appeals hearing for April 6, 2023 is now in session. This hearing is being conducted in accordance with the applicable provisions of the open meeting law, including the updated provisions enacted by the legislature last year. The new law allows the board to continue its practice of holding virtual hearings until March, 2025. This hearing of the board is being held remotely via the Zoom webinar event platform. This hearing is also being recorded. In order, in order to, to ensure this hearing of the board is open to the public, members of the public may access this hearing through telephone and video conferencing. The information for connecting to this hearing is listed on today's hearing agenda, which is posted on the notices page of the city's website, boston.gov. Members of the public will enter the virtual hearing as attendees, which means you will not see yourself on the screen and you will be muted throughout unless administratively unmuted when asked to comment. Board members, applicants, and their attorneys or representatives will participate in the hearing as panelists, and they will appear alongside the presentation materials when speaking. Panelists are strongly encouraged to keep video on while presenting to the board. As with our in-person meetings, comments and support will be followed by comments in opposition. The order of comments is as follows. Elected officials, representatives of elected officials, and members of the public. The chair may limit the number of people called upon to offer a comment and the time for commenting as time constraints require. For that reason, the board prefers to hear from members of the public who are most impacted by a project. That is those individuals who live closest to the project. If you wish to comment on an appeal, please click the raise hand button along the bottom of your screen in the Zoom webinar plat platform. Click it again and your hand should go down. When the host sees your hand, you will receive a request to unmute yourself. Select yes and you should be able to talk. If you are connected to the hearing by telephone, please press star nine to raise and lower your hand. You must press star six to unmute yourself after you receive the request from the host. Those called upon to comment will be asked to state their name and address first and then provide their comment. In the interest of time and to ensure that you have enough time to do so, please raise your hand as soon as Mr. Stembridge reads the address into the record. Do not raise your hand before the relevant address is called or the meeting host will not know to call on you at the appropriate time. These instructions will be repeated throughout the hearing. All right, Mr. Stembridge. Good evening, Madam Chair. Good evening, Ms. Betta Barraza. Good evening, Madam Chair. Good evening. All right, I will turn it over to Mr. Stembridge. Thank you, Madam Chair. The first hearing we have this evening is for case BOA 1421688, with the address being 1066 Bennington Street. Is the applicant or their representative present? Hello. Yes, oh, there you go. Go ahead. Can you state your yeah. name and address for the record? My name is Raul San Clemente. My direction. 1066 Bennington Street, apartment one in East Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, and I'm Catherine San Clemente, daughter of Raul San Clemente, who will assist with translating. Thank you. Can you uh, briefly walk us through your proposal, please? So the proposal is to uh, legitimize um, two additional parking spots. Um, there would be no additional construction. Um, my father currently has one uh, parking spot that I believe was granted around 2004. And after that job, uh, the work, you know, the cement work that was placed in all from 2004, he's had a space for additional parking, which has been utilized um, until most recently we were made aware by the city. And so we're now looking to legitimize the two additional spots. And so is he 
he has been using those spots. That is correct. We okay. were informed by the city at one point that we couldn't park outside because that was considered uh uh, it was considered a driveway. So we've been receiving sort of mixed messages from the city throughout the years. Um, at one point, you know, we had reached out to Salamantina who informed my dad that it'd be enough for him to just put two posts, two parking posts. So that's what we had for many years. Um, and then at one point, um, I think we were told that we had to bring the post down and just put the cement curbs in. Um, and then, you know, we've been ticketed if we're parking outside because it's considered a driveway. We were most recently ticketed for using it as a driveway and not parking outside. So with, with all of the mixed messages that we're receiving, we're sort of just looking to finalize and hopefully just legitimize the two spots and whether we just need to post that say no parking or if we do need to place the curbs either or we're, we're happy to do. So can you confirm where is the curb cut? Where are they accessing? So the like curb the, cut the is currently on the left and right hand side of the car that has P1. Okay. And so we are utilizing the spots P2 and P3, and we're just looking to maybe extend, if, if, if we prefer for a curb cut, then extend the curb cut on the left hand or I guess the way you're looking at it yes on the left hand side of p1 we'd extend it all the way through p3 okay and is there currently uh street parking what are you what is the situation there on the street? Is a street parking space for one vehicle only within the area of p2 and p3 okay uh Ms. Bedbraza any questions on the on the drawings? Yes, Madam Chair. So um, on the images that you submitted, I only see one curb cut, which is mostly along P1. You just mentioned that there is off-street parking uh, in front of P2 and P3, the spaces that you, you have noted in terms of the cars. Yes, that is correct. There is, um, with the, go ahead. Okay. So basically, if you were, if we were to approve this request, you would be removing two parking spaces along the street. There's only space for one vehicle there. Right. So if we were to approve two additional parking space and the curb, you would be removing one public parking spaces on the street. That is correct. Okay. Um, so no, I don't have any further questions. Can can you please read on the record BPDA's recommendation and BTD? Uh, Mr. Stembridge, do you have a recommendation from BTD? I, I don't have one. The recommendation, excuse me, from Bob Domenico of BT, Boston Transportation Department is uh, he suggested denial. His exact words were, I'm sorry, sorry I'm so late, but I requested the parking plan for 1066 Bennington Street does not work. Okay. And so for the record, BPDA's recommendation is also denial. Curb cut is excessive. Uh, it also mentions that plans do not show dimensions of the proposed spaces. Um, can you also address, uh, you know, we did get in a butter comment about water runoff, you know, drainage issues with your existing driveway. Yeah, that's um, most likely our neighbors to the right of us on Bennington Street. So that would be 1064 Bennington Street. Um, you know, we were actually really good friends and we would go to church together. Unfortunately, the relationship has um, um, has been broken and that relationship has brought upon issues um, where they are just, you know, just kind of fighting us with with anything really and so i was made aware by the previous public hearing that we had and i know no, no neighbor uh, attended the the zoom uh virtual event they she did ask was it not stephanie um natalia from the city did ask um if um if we were aware of any neighbors who would oppose and we had mentioned uh the 1064 neighbors um, so essentially, it seems that she has an issue that she believes that the um, 
the construction of the parking lot is causing water to run into her basement. However, I think it was back in 2017, 2018, where the entire Bennington Street was affected from that heavy rain that spring or summer where any home from 1064 all the way down to 10, is it 1050 or 1030? They were all affected by the um, flooding. So some, some of us had some water in our basement, others further down on Bennington Street had flooding into the first floor. Um, so it just, you know, it, it just seems that I, I don't think that the parking lot has, you know, is affecting in terms of, you know, we're all getting rainwater and there was just a lot of rain that season where, you know, the entire street was affected by it. I don't think our parking lot is necessarily affecting hers as she also has two parking lots of her own. Thank you. Uh, uh, may, may we have public testimony? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office likes to defer to the judgment of this board. Our office held an abutters meeting for this proposal on February 15th. Uh, no abutters were in attendance. Uh, we did later receive a letter of opposition from the direct abutter, which I believe the board was referencing earlier, uh, mm -hmm. where the abutter um, asserts that they've been subjected to flooding um, due to the water runoff coming off of the, the paved area. Um, with that, we defer to the board. We don't have any other further concerns our letters at this time. Thank, thank you. Madam Chair, I have no raised hands at the moment. Thank you. Uh, with that, uh, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, um, I'd like to put forward a motion of denial due to the potential of removing one public um, uh, parking space along Ashley Ave. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Ms. Better Barraza. Yes. Uh, chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Can I, can we add anything? Uh, the vote has already been taken. Thank you. Um, so can I ask, is there any way that we can appeal this further or um, I guess? I guess I, I understand that the, uh, the, um, it seems that uh, the, if, I, if I'm hearing it correct, the denial was because of removing one street parking spot. But I think, you know, my only thought is we'd be gaining two additional parking spots, therefore removing two additional vehicles from Ashley Street. So I know though you'd be removing- Mr. Uh, Madam uh, Chair, yeah, they, they can, uh, this is Javier, they can get in touch with our office, but they'll be uh, set notice of the decision and they can go from there. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Next case. Uh, before we go to the next case, um, are there any deferrals or withdrawals that anyone may want to put forth? Hearing none, then we will go to the next case, which is BOA 135-2188. Address being 88 Chelsea Street. Is the applicant or their representative present? I think I saw Julio earlier. There, there yeah. we go. Hi. Hi there. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Julio AC. I'm uh, one of the owners. Uh, new, new owners uh, take this business uh, a few months ago. And uh, I'm here to remove the provisional license and get the right to get the new one, the good Thanks. one. Thank you. Any any so, work being done? I'm sorry. Any work being done, or just uh, just a removal of the proviso? Um, no, we are we almost have all licenses to. Okay. Any questions to, from Any questions from the board? Hearing none, we'll take public testimony. Ah, uh, yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office like to defer to the judgment of this board. Our office is unaware of any concerns involving this proposal from the community. Um, with that, we defer to the board. Thank you. Thank I have you. no hands at the moment, Madam Chair. Thanks. Thank you. With that, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval. May I have a second? 
Second. Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Ms. Bedbaraza. Yes. The chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Okay, Julio, you're all set. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next, we'll have case BOA 1424488 with the address of 36 High Street. Is the applicant or the representative present? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, Cameron Merrill on behalf of the Herberts who are uh, on this as well. And I'd ask that uh, Isamu Kanda be promoted as a panelist. I believe that he is on the call. Okay, I'm gonna make him a panelist now. If you could just pull that up when it pops up, Isamu. Thanks. So great, so I'll, I'll just briefly introduce the Herberts. The Herberts uh, have lived in Boston since uh, 1984. Uh, they have children in the area and they are renovating this beautiful home which you see before you uh, over by the monument in Charlestown. Uh, throughout the process of their renovation, uh, they determined that they needed to add uh, another um, support near the roof rafters and then a hatch was going to be installed for the purposes of accessing the mechanicals along the roof. Uh, as they further developed their plan, uh, they realized that some more outdoor space for themselves and their family uh, in conjunction with the character of the neighborhood would be best. Um, around this area, there's about 20 or so uh, roof decks and similar hatches, etc. Uh, but they decided to not go with a head house to limit the actual elevation on the top of the property. Um, so that being said, uh, if you want to go to the slide with the roof and this slide, Eastamu can tell you a little bit more about it. Hi, good evening. Um, so it's a um, almost a flat roof. It's a low slope roof on top of a mansard. Um, so what you see is a hatch, which is an access hatch to get up to that rooftop, and then a fairly straightforward roof deck, which we've pushed all the way um, towards the view side, but away from High Street, um, as well as pulling it away from the side street, Corda Street. So we did this to minimize the, um, the visibility from street level. Um, and so we've, we've aimed to keep everything as sort of um, low impact visually with an open railing. Um, everything is sort of at a minimum height that it could be while still providing accessible uh, access to the deck. So what you see is sort of a I think what our, our, our proposal is showing is sort of the, the lowest, um, most uh, sort of least um, least visible proposal. And one thing I wanted to add is that the neighbor does have a full-size head house and roof deck uh, on the other side of this townhouse, which does not appear in the slides, uh, and that the Herberts uh, went through a robust effort to uh, speak with their abutters, uh, neighbors, they stopped people on the street, they flyered, we had an abutters meeting, uh, and we've had no opposition to this project. We've had support um, from various neighbors, uh, and they're excited about the opportunity to have some open space up on their, their roof deck. Thank you. Any questions from the board? No questions. With that, may I have public testimony? <clears throat> uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, Sean Breen with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, we would like to defer our judgment to the board. Uh, an abutters meeting was held on February 2nd. It was well attended. Um, this office has received three letters of support and none in opposition. And Madam Chair, I have no raised hands. Thank you. With that, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval with a proviso that it undergoes BPDA design review and to, exp to explore the idea of a setback, um, the dimensions of a roof to minimize visibility from the street. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Ms. Bedabraza. Yes. Chair also votes yes, motion carries. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Next we will have case BOA 139. 9338 with the address of 9 Sackville Street. 
Is the applicant or their representative present? Uh, yeah, good evening. This is Eric Zacherson. I am the uh, owner and architect for the project. Great. Can you just uh, briefly uh, walk us through? Yes, uh, it's an existing single family home, which we purchased about a, a year ago and, or moved into about a year ago and are, would like to um, expand to uh, become a uh, two family, three story property. Um, it's in a 3F, 3000 district. Um, the uh, the project is, has one variance, be, uh, and that's partly that's because it is the existing home is about four feet from the uh, right side yard, and we made the uh, the choice to extend the third floor straight up, so the um, part portion of the third floor is in the side yard setback. But otherwise, it provides two parking spaces as required, um, and meets the open space FAR uh, requirements. Um, and all of their step back and dimensional requirements. Great, thank you. Any questions on the plans, Ms. Petabraza? No questions on the plan. Any other questions? Hearing none, may, may I have public testimony? Madam Chair, members of the board, Sean Breen with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, we would like to defer our judgment to the board. Uh, and about his meeting was held on February 2nd. Uh, this office hasn't received any letters in support or opposition. Thank you. Any other no. raised hands? I have no raised hands, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, with that, may I, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval with BPDA design review. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Ms. Bedraza? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Next, we have case BOA 1408580, the address being 24 Pleasant Street. Is the applicant or their representative present? Um, yes, Joseph Luna, Luna Design Group out of Danvers, Massachusetts. We are the project architect representing our client, um, Heather and Grant Ewing. The project in question involves the installation of the removal first of a, of a single dormer along the front side facing Pleasant Street, um, and then adding two book it, bookend dormers on, on centered over the second floor windows above and then infilled with a shed roof. This is being done because on the third floor, um, it's a relatively small footprint, um, but the big concern is the lack of headroom inside the master bedroom. Uh, the clients are trying to maximize this, their usable, usable space within the third floor. So the proposal is to do two similar construction, constructed dormers um, to what was what the single one that's being removed and also on the adjacent um, townhouse. Um, again, center those over this over the second floor windows in the same plane as the adjacent dormer and then infill that with the shed dormer in a Nantucket style dormer. Great, thank you. Any questions on the plans? No questions. Okay, with that, may I have public testimony? Madam Chair, members of the board, Sean Breen with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, we'd like to defer our judgment to the board. Uh, and a butter's meeting was held on February 2nd. Uh, this office received three letters of support that the board should have access to and no letters of opposition. And Madam Chair, I have no raised hands. Thank you. Uh, with that, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of, uh, of approval with BPDA design review, paying a special attention for the dormer to fit its context. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Ms. Barraza. Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Next, we have case BOA 1435497, the address being 11 Lewisburg Square. <coughs> Is the applicant or their representative present? Yes, uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, uh, members of the board, Dennis Quilty. I'm an attorney representing the property owners, Mr. and Mrs. Robert Bass. 
uh, for the renovation of this uh, spectacular single family home. Uh, much of the work here uh, has been done uh, with the approval of the Beacon Hill Architectural Commission for exterior window renovations and simple uh, work such as that. The matter before us tonight requires uh, zoning relief for the infill of, a, of the second floor of an existing glass atrium <clears throat> at the rear, <clears throat> excuse me, at the rear of the building, which drops down into a garden which is uh, private uh, to the residents. Uh, so the, the application is to ask for roughly an eight by eight infill uh, at that second level, which uh, basically extends living space at that level of the house. Uh, and that is the entirety of the uh, application. We did uh, meet with the Beacon Hill Civic Association Zoning and Licensing Committee and we received a letter of non-opposition from the Beacon Hill Civic Association. We had a very well attended and positive abutters meeting at the site. And we have letters of support from uh, probably a half dozen or so abutters and people in and around the property and are unaware of any objections uh, as we uh, arrive before you this evening. Uh, the architect, uh, Monica Pauly is with us uh, tonight uh, and her team, if there are any questions that the board might have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Quilty. Any questions from the board? No questions. Okay, hearing none, may I have public testimony? Yes, hello, Madam Chair, members of the board, Maggie Van Scorp from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, we would like to defer to the judgment of the board. This applicant had, our, our office hosted an abutters meeting for this applicant on February 22nd, which was well attended. We did not hear any concerns at that meeting. And this applicant also met with the Beacon Hill Civic Association, which did issue a letter of non-opposition as stated. With this, again, we'd like to defer to the judgment of the board. Thank you. I have no raised hands at the moment, Madam Chair. Thank you. May I have a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval with a proviso that the plans be submitted to the Boston Landmarks Commission for design review. Thank you. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Ms. Better Barraza? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you. Next, we'll have case BOA. 1394771, the address being 10,002 to 10,004 uh, Tremont Street. Is the applicant or their representative present? Yes, good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Alice Montilla, and I am the new owner. And I would like to remove the proviso of the previous restaurant. A good eats to open up my new restaurant, Bacalao Kitchenette. Thank you. Any questions from the board? No. Hearing, hearing none, may I have public testimony? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. This time the Mayor's Office to defer to the judgment of this board. On a but, uh, no abutters meeting was held, but we had the applicant notify uh, residents and abutters. Uh, we're unaware of any concerns at this time. Thank you. Thank you. No raised hands at the moment, Madam Chair. Thank you. May I have a motion? Madam motion. Chair, I'd like to oh, go ahead. Um, right. Madam Chair, motion, motion for approval. I have a second. second. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Ms. Bedbaraza? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck with your new establishment. Thank you. Next, we have a BOA 1434938, address being 9 Wenlock Road. Is the applicant or the representative present? Yes, good evening, um, Madam Chair, members of the board. Attorney John Barry representing the owner of this particular site, the business address of 1156 Dorchester Ave, Boston Mass 02125. The architect of record on this particular project is 686 Architects. Uh, representing them is Christopher Drew, principal manager of that particular architectural firm. Um, what we're presenting as far as a proposal here tonight uh, is in addition on the westerly portion of the existing uh, structure on the site. 
Uh, the sole violation here is an FAR violation in this 1F5000 neighborhood of Dorchester. Uh, the FAR that is prescribed is 0.5 with the addition. Uh, the FAR calculation is 0.6. Um, I would just like to highlight that the part of the proposal uh, does include an extension of some living space into the basement that does not include any bedrooms. Uh, it is strictly just a family room and then for mechanical storage. Um, and then the additional height that's proposed is just to create storage in the attic of the existing structure after the renovations that are proposed if they were to be approved. Um, if there are any particular questions related to the proposal, um, the plans, or uh, what is the violation, um, please let us know. Great. No, nope, you answered my question. Any other question from the board? No further questions. Nope. May, uh, may I have public testimony? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer to the judgment of this board. Uh, our office held an abutters meeting on February 15th, where one abutter was in attendance and voiced their support for this proposal. The applicant then went on to meet with the Cedar Grove Civic Association, which voted unanimously to support this proposal. Uh, with that, we defer to the board. Thank you. Thank you. I have no additional raised hands. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. I second. Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Ms. Barraza. Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Board. Next, we have case BOA 1409011. The address being 26 Greenview Avenue. Is the applicant or their representative present? Yes. Hello. This is Jessica Wilson. Great. Can you uh, uh, put your address into the record and, and just uh, walk us through your proposal? Sure. And um, we also have our architect, Christopher Brown, who may be speaking as well. Um, my husband and I are the homeowners of 26 Greenview. We have lived in JP for more than a decade and actually rented on Greenview for a number of years before this home became available and we were able to purchase it. Um, we also have a young daughter and we it's a hundred year old home. So we're um, doing a number of um, things to update it. And specifically that includes an extension on the back, um, a dormer on the roof to change the stairwell, which is currently located in a bedroom. Um, so we're making that stairwell more accessible, which will necessitate a dormer. And then um, also creating a bike path on the side of the home because my husband um, uses his bike every day to get to work. Great, thank you. Any questions on the plans? Um, Madam Chair, I would like to know if the condenser can be out of sight. Can it be located at the rear? Hi, this is Chris Brown, um, architect uh, for the project. Um, the condenser location um, is sort of subject to the distance of the refrigerant line. Um, and ideally, there, there really is uh, is not a lot of opportunity to squeeze it in anywhere. One one option, um, if there's a concern um, for visible or noise um, requirements, uh, may be to screen it and um, try to knock down uh, noise in that way. Is that a possibility? Yes, great. No further questions. Thank you. May I have public testimony? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer to the judgment of this board. Our office held a butters meeting on December 5th, uh, where the applicant understandably received support and then went on to meet with the Jamaica Plain Neighborhood Council Zoning Subcommittee, which also expressed support for this proposal as well. Uh, with that, we defer to the judgment of this board. Thank you. Thank you. I do have a raised hand here. Um, Fred, uh, once unmuted, can you state your name and address for the record? Last yeah, hi. Position. Hi. Uh, I'm sorry. My name is Fred Walnut um, at 26 Greenview Avenue. So we're the abutter immediately, if you're looking at the house to the left. Um, we're in opposition to this. Should I continue and say why? Sorry about that. <clears throat> so we, we were on the dis. Uh, we were on the December 5th of Butters meeting and had a lot of questions about um, how close the side of the 
if you're looking at the house, it's the left side of the house, how close that is to our mm-hmm. house. And it's about seven feet right now. <clears throat> and it's kind of a dank, dark passage as you go down it. And also we talked about the condenser. And at that meeting, my understanding it was going to either be left where it is or p- put into the back. We haven't heard anything different except right now on the AC condenser. But our concern is the um, with the height being added, with um, the extension on the back of the house, it's going to pretty much cut off all of our sunlight and it'll be extremely close to our house. There's two bedrooms that are, again, seven feet apart uh, right now. Uh, And when you look at that drawing, the initial rendering, I guess it's called, it it was the whole house drawing. If you're looking at that, our house would be to the right of that picture. So it's rather misleading because that shows a wide open field. But again, you, you could walk down there with both your hands, ex- arms extended and touch the houses. So that's what we're worried about. You know, the mold, that side of the house is always moldy and mossy. Um, we talked to a realtor about this and they said that it would definitely, you know, nothing against those guys fixing their house up at all, but not to the detriment of our property value going down okay. or, you know, not enough light and air in the back and all that. Thank you, sir. Can I, have a follow, can I have a follow up question to the applicant? Yes, exactly. Uh, my, my understanding is pretty much the perimeter or the architect, the perimeter of the house is pretty much staying the same. Um, it's just you're you're just increasing square footage at the rear. Is that correct? That's correct. OK, so you're not really building to the side yard any further than what's existing. It- no, the um, side and front uh, perimeter um, footprint remains the same. It's yeah, it's just the rear. Projecting outward in the rear. In the uh, rear. Okay, no further question. Thank you. Thank yep. you. Thanks. With that, may I have a motion? Um, Madam Chair, I would like to put forward a motion of approval with a proviso to screen the condenser. Okay, any design review? NBPDA design review, correct. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Ms. Barbaraza? Yes. Chair also votes yes, the motion carries. Good luck. Thank you. Next we have case BOA 1415260. Address being for Wallingford Road. Is the applicant or their representative present? Yes, <clears throat> excuse me, Mr. Secretary, Madam Chair, members of the board, Dennis Quilty, attorney, representing the property owner of uh, For Wallingford Road, Anna Brook, who's with us this evening. Uh, this is a renovation which resulted from a fire in May of 2021, which destroyed the entire interior of the building, mostly due to water damage. Um, The building, although, excuse me, indicated for zoning as a single, has been a uh, two-family, in in practice, a two-family home for many, many years. These people, my clients bought it in 2006. It was an existing two-unit building at that time. It's always been taxed as a two-unit building. Uh, They simply are seeking to replace uh, the two units with the same number of of bedrooms and same living space that existed uh, previously. No exterior work is being done except to replace windows which were damaged in the fire. Um, And uh, again, we went through a very um, uh, healthy community process. We had a meeting with the Brighton Alston Improvement Association, which resulted in a letter of non-opposition uh, as well as a, uh, I, I don't have my notes. I, I'm pretty That's sure. That's okay, Mr. Newman or Butters someone meeting. will comment on that. Thank you. And, and, and in a Butters meeting as well. So uh, in, in any event, we are here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any questions from the board? No questions. Nope. Hearing none, may I have public testimony? 
Uh, yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office like to defer to the judgment of this board. Our office uh, held no butters meeting uh, where no butters opted to attend. Uh, the applicant went on to meet with the Civic Association that expressed no concerns with this proposal. Uh, with that, we defer to the judgment of this board. Thank you. The Civic Group would be the, the Brighton Alston Improvement Association. Thank you. I have no raised hands at the moment, Madam Chair. Thank you. With that, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval with a proviso that the plans be submitted to the Arbandine Architectural Conservation District Commission within the Boston Landmarks Commission. Thank you. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Ms. Barraza. Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you. Next, we have case BOA. One three eight two four five three, with the address of two twenty six Harvard Avenue, is the the applicant or the representative present? I thank you, Madam Chair, and through you to the board. I just want to make sure you guys can all hear me. Yes, sir. Oh, perfect. My name is Chase Filifana. I'm the director of development for Planet Fitness. Uh, Planet Fitness has enjoyed a relationship at, in uh, many neighborhoods throughout Boston where we exist. We're happy to be bringing a new gym to the greater Alston neighborhood. We are requesting approval of both conditional use for a gym in a community commercial zone and an extension of hours of operation on weeknights. Though we do not require any dimensional relief as we are taking possession of an existing building and making no changes to that building, I'm happy to display uh, a site plan and elevation of how the building will look. I think I can do that possibly here. Is this the entire building where the Urban Outfitters is or a portion? It, it's actually exactly where the Urban Outfitters is. So that tenant is going out, we're taking over their space exactly. Um, the extension of weekday hours ties directly to our ethos as a company that everybody deserves the opportunity to work out and create a healthy lifestyle for themselves, regardless of their socioeconomic status or the unique hours they might work. We know that there are many in the Austin Brighton community that work in the medical field, sometimes taking shifts that last 13 hours and on, making it difficult for them to find time um, to leave work and work on their own health and fitness goals. The same can be said of residents that work more than one job. Our low fees and our extended hours make our gyms more inclusive for all people of the community. We are pleased with the reception we've received from the Alston Civic Association when we presented our proposal and thank them for taking the time to learn about our plans. We are also pleased to have the support of District Councilor Brandon. The request before you um, for the gym operating 24 hours a day is it, we're going to be amending that. Actually, we've decided to amend those hours in response to noise concern by abutters to the following hours. Um, those hours are going to be Monday through Friday, 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. And Saturday and Sunday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And we hope that the board looks favorably, favorably upon our request. Thank you. You addressed the main question, which was uh, the support seemed uh, to center around those hours. So uh, thank you. Uh, any other questions from the board? Madam Chair, no questions. Thank you. May I have public testimony? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office likes to defer to the judgment of this board. Our office held an abutters meeting uh, where the applicant answered all questions from abutters and then went on to meet with the Alston Civic Association. Uh, the ACA initially was concerned with the thought of it being 24 seven, um, but with the new proposed hours, as uh, the applicant mentioned, uh, the ACA wrote a letter of support, which the board should have access to. Uh, and there was also another abutter as well who was in support of those new hours. Um, with that, we defer to the judgment of the board. Thank you. Thank you. I have no, um, no raised hand, Madam Chair, thanks. No worries, thank you. Uh, with that, may I have a motion? Uh, Madam Chair, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Madam Chair, uh, motion to approve. Do we feel that we need to restate those hours just to confirm? Um, we, uh, we can certainly do that. Thank you. 
So motion uh, to approve. Motion approve. to approve with yep. uh, uh, the hours to be amended as 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 stated, Monday to Friday, 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday, 7 to 7. Thank you. Uh, may I have a second? I second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Ms. Barraza. Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Next, we have case B, a rediscussion of case BOA 1434811 with the address of 18 to 20 Meridian Street. Is the applicant or their representative present? She is on. Um, I sent a request to unmute you. And Tania, can you, well, can you, you should see a panelist designation pop up on your screen. Do you, are you still on? I think you're on twice. Hold on to me. Uh, once unmuted, can you state your name and address? Oh, okay. Market? There we go. Join. Oh, you're unmuted. Can you unmute yourself? I can't hear you if you're talking. She was, she was on. Yeah, she's, she looks she's like on. she's on twice. Yeah. You're on two. If you're on two different devices, can you unmute yourself? Oh, okay. Sorry about it. Okay. Can yep. you stay here? You know. Yep, there you go. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, can you state your name and address for the record and uh, just uh, let us know what you're proposing? Okay, my name is Antinea Noguera. I represent uh, ILDGC for this project um, made by the architect Eric uh, Sarrison, the context uh, before. So we asking for remove the previous in grant to this petition not only. The decision was in 03-30-2021. So for the new name is going to be Pomona Cafe. Thank you. Any questions from the board? So the only change would be name change? Mm, the, yes, basically the name is going to be, the concept and everything is going to be the same. Are, there, are you making any renovations? Yes, we have to because the, uh, the place is empty. Okay. They needed, they didn't build the project, so they dropped the project. Any other questions from the board? Hearing none, may I have public testimony? Ah, uh, yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office Neighborhood Services. This time, the Mayor's Office like to defer to the judgment of this board. Um, our office is unaware of any concerns at this time, and we are um, aware, actually, that a number of residents have expressed uh, support for this proposal and excitement for uh, the store to open up. Thank you. May I have no raised hands. Excellent. Thank you. May I have a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval with a proviso that plans undergo BPDA design <laughs> review. Uh, may I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Ms. Bettabraza? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stembridge and Ms. Bedbraza and Jessica and Javier. <laughs> have a good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.